Today, I'm going to show you a complete workflow using MeshLab to transform those massive point clouds into optimized meshes that are significantly lighter and more manageable. That use actual geometry so that you can snap to and measure in Revit. That's clear enough to visualize complex architectural features and that increases efficiency within Revit by optimizing computer performance. This workflow begins in Recap or in any equivalent point cloud processing software. From here, you can export the point cloud in E57 format. Let's import the point cloud. From the File tab, click Import Mesh. Find your E57 point cloud file and click Open. Let's start by getting familiar with MeshLab's interface. The viewport navigation is pretty straightforward using the left mouse button to rotate. The middle mouse button or control plus left on the mouse to pan. Using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And you can also see this trackball in the middle of the screen which enables model orbit, which orbits around the center of the associated bounding box. A layering system is essential for managing your project. You can access it here on the toolbar. Each mesh or point cloud appears as a separate layer that you can toggle on or off. The top menu contains most of the tools that we'll be using. The filters menu has most of the processing tools and the render menu handles the visualization options. Let me also point out the status bar at the bottom which shows your current model statistics like vertices and faces count. This will be very important when we're optimizing our model. Before we dive in, let's check our model scale. MeshLab works with unitless values, so we need to verify what we're dealing with. Getting this right is crucial for properly sizing your model in Revit later. Our first processing step is point cloud simplification. This filter reduces the number of points in a 3D model while maintaining the overall shape as much as possible. This is done by managing the number of samples. Essentially, samples are the points that define the 3D shape of the model. The sampling figure of 10,000 essentially set a threshold for simplification. The final number of points depends on the algorithm. The next step in the process is computing normals. Normals are essentially tiny arrows that tell the computer which way each part of your model is facing. Let's navigate to filters, find normals, curvatures and orientation, and then click on compute normals for point sets. For architectural models, I recommend setting the neighbor number to 16. These dialog boxes can be hard to understand. It's sometimes helpful to click the help button for more information, although this doesn't always help. So I'll try to summarize the tools in layman's terms. If you have a reasonably clean scan, you might want to go as low as 10 or 12, or alternatively, for noisy scans, you may like to bump it up to 20. This step is critical because these normals will determine how our final mesh is constructed. And now comes the most important step, turning the point cloud into a 3D mesh. For this, we'll use the screened Poisson surface recreation, which is perfect for architectural models. For architectural models, I recommend these settings. A reconstruction depth of 10. This will balance the detail and the file size. An adaptive octree depth of 9. Slightly lower than the reconstruction depth. A scale factor of 1 to maintain original scale. A minimum number of samples of 1.5. This reduces the noise while preserving detail. Interpolation weight of 4. 
and make sure to click pre-clean to remove scanning artifacts. If you're wondering what these terms mean in simpler terms, basically reconstruction depth controls the level of detail, higher numbers capture more details but create larger files. Minimum number of samples determines how many scan points are needed to create the surface. Higher values reduce noise but might create holes. Interpolation weight determines how closely the surface sticks to the original points. This process might take a few minutes depending on your point cloud size and computer specs. You can see the progress in the status bar. Now that the mesh has been created, you'll see that the model now has a faces count. You can also visibly see the change in the model, where MeshLab has now created a solid. Now let's clean up our mesh and optimize it for use in Revit. Before we progress, it is a good idea to save the model in its current state. And during this process, ensure that you select the highlighted layers. Moving along, go to Filters, Selection, and select Faces with Edges Longer Than. Set the Edge Threshold based on your model units. Check Preview to see what gets selected. These red areas represent stretched or distorted parts of the model that need fixing. You can delete these problematic faces and fill in the holes later, or in some cases just leave them if they're in non-critical areas. You can follow this up by using the view tools as shown on screen to clean up any residue. Be sure to take your time here as this will have an impact on the final result. MeshLab has several visualization options that help identify problems. Go to Render, Shaders, then select Glass. Next, we can select X-Ray, which is like making your walls transparent from the inside, helping you to spot missing or backward facing surfaces, which are common issues in mesh models. And finally, we can have a look at the Toon Shader. This makes the model look cartoon-like with clear edges, which is great for spotting issues like holes or disconnected sections. Finally, let's simplify our mesh for better performance in Revit. To do this, navigate to Filters, find Remeshing, Simplification and Reconstruction. Then find Quadratic Edge Collapse Decimation. For good Revit performance, I recommend a target number of faces around a 200,000 mark. Keep quality threshold at 0.3 to preserve key features and remember to check preserve topology. Now look at that, we've significantly reduced the number of faces in the model while maintaining all of the important architectural details. Before exporting, we also need to transfer the point cloud colors to the mesh. Select the point cloud as the source and the mesh as the target. Ensure that transfer color is selected and proceed. We're now ready to export our optimized mesh for Revit. I recommend using the OBJ format for best results. Although Revit can import OBJ files, it's a little funky. I like to reclassify this through 3ds Max or Blender. The benefit here is the ability to snap in Revit. And while you do forego 
some of the file size, it's still nowhere near as heavy as a point cloud. Now let's switch to Revit and import our new mesh. Let me quickly discuss some common issues that you might encounter. If your model appears too large or small in Revit, you need to adjust the scale during import. This usually happens when there's a mishmash between your MeshLab units and Revit units. If you see missing faces or holes, you'll need to return to MeshLab to fix the non-manifold edges or run additional mesh repair. Poor performance in Revit usually means your mesh is still too complex. So go back to MeshLab and simplify it further. And if your model is incorrectly oriented, you can either use Revit's Rotate tools or go back to MeshLab and re-export with the correct orientation. And there you have it, a complete workflow for transforming point cloud data into clean, usable mesh models for Revit. Remember to check your model at each stage and adjust the settings based on your specific architectural needs. Whatever works for a simple building may not be ideal for something more complex. This approach solves the biggest challenges in the scan to BIM process, giving you manageable data, usable geometry, better visualization, accurate documentation, and a more efficient workflow.